Okay, so in today's video, I just want to talk about the risks. The risks are an area, I think, of an element of uncertainty with lots of golfers. And there is one mistake that I tend to see in particular, which will cause big problems. Now, this comes to the sort of term of lag. Now, lag is a relationship which you definitely need in the golf swing. And lag is the difference between, should we say, a straight arm relationship between the club and the arm, and a relationship where the club shaft starts to look more this way, should we say, at a 90 degree angle. Now, the reason why lag is so important is because if you take away lag, you won't be able to whip the club through. If you introduce an element of lag, you will then be able to whip the golf club through. The problem is, however, is that if you start to exceed, should we say, this 90 degree angle, in terms of this type of angle here. Now, the, the problem is, is when you start moving more this way, it'll have an effect on your wrist position. So potentially your wrist will go from, should we say, a relatively flat position to something where it starts to become, should we say, with an element of extension or, or more as it's kind of known in the golf trade as more cupped. And what also happens is this is the bigger thing is if you start to exceed this amount of sort of cupping motion, it also means that this trail arm is going to start bending too much. So what I try and get most of my students to do, if not all of my students to do, is to try and think about what it is that you're actually trying to do with your arms in the backswing position. And when it comes to the top of the backswing, what you don't want is you don't want your hands too close towards your body like so. For one of the reasons that it will allow the wrist to cup too much, that will have an adverse effect on things like the club face. But also, if your hands and arms are too close to your body in the backswing, then the immediate reaction is to promote like a casting motion in the downswing position. Now, you only have to imagine yourself throwing a ball or skimming a stone to understand how detrimental that would be. So if you were sort of teaching your child or your child was mimicking you skimming a stone, what you'd notice is that if you watch my trail arm, see the way my arm moves away from my body so it can move towards my body, away from my body, towards my body. And whether I'm gonna throw a ball, it'd be the same sort of motion. Now you sort of imagine that this time I allow my upper arm to stay very close towards the side of my body and then I try and throw. You can't. And what will be the immediate reaction is you'll have to pull and then your arm will actually move away from you. And this is what happens with golfers who end up getting very stuck. Stuck in terms of hands are too close to the body in the start of the downswing, which promotes this called a casting effect. So wrist positions in the backswing position I'm not sure, if I'm honest with you, that needs to be such a consciousness for most golfers, okay? I don't think you need to try and, put, you know, set the club into a perfect position. I think the wrist positions are generally formed through a correct grip. So as long as you're holding the club in the fingers and getting the heel pad sitting on top to some degree, what you'll find is that as the club sort of swings back, you'll naturally be able to create that angle that I was referring to as lag earlier in the lesson. What you really want to be doing when you're swinging back is making sure that your trail hand is helping you push an element of pressure onto the club to help you maintain width and to ensure that your upper arm doesn't get too close to your body. From this type of position, you can then bring that club down and whip it through. If you start to exceed this and this wrist angle gets a bit too messy and your hands get too close, then you're just gonna forever get stuck. Hopefully that helps you out.